welcome to yet another tutorial by Davies Media Design. My name is Michael Davies, and in today's tutorial, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to create a YouTube channel art design like the one you see here. This is using GIMP version 2.10, which at the time of this tutorial is the latest version of GIMP. This is actually a tutorial I did a while ago, but I figured I would update it because I've been getting a few requests for this tutorial lately. But of course, before I get into that, I want to direct you guys over to my website at daviesmediadesign.com. You can also enroll in our GIMP photo editing course from beginner to pro photo retoucher on Udemy. And you can support our channel and help us grow by becoming a patron on Patreon. And I'll include a link to this as well as all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description of the video. So here is the photo I'll be using in today's tutorial and I downloaded this for free off of Pixabay. I did download the larger version of this image so if you click here on free download I went with the 4000 by 2667 image. I also use this font here and a couple other free fonts which I'll include links to in the description of the video. And here is the final image on a test channel here. This is actually one of my other channels, DMD Premiere. This is just so you guys can see what this final design looks like. So here is our final design in GIMP. And I actually used a template that I designed myself in order to create this. So I'll open that template up by going to File, and in my case, I'll go to Open Recent, and I'll just click on that file here. I'll have this file available for download for free, so you guys can check out the link in the description to get this YouTube channel art template. So you'll see here I have the various screen sizes denoted on here and they go by width by height and these are in pixels. So 2560 pixels by 1440 pixels is the largest size you'll need and that's for the TV screens. Your desktop max area, so the max area that's gonna be showing on any desktop will be 2560 by 423. Then you've got your tablet dimensions here and your desktop minimum and mobile dimensions on here. The desktop minimum and mobile area is also your safe area. So this is where your logo and your text needs to be. So just make sure to keep your important items within this 1546 by 423 area. I've also marked each of these layers with a color tag. So anything that has a color tag can be hidden and you can also delete them if you want and that'll save room and that will also just keep any of this stuff from accidentally exporting to the final JPEG image. All right, so now I'm just going to start by creating a new layer and I'm going to name this background, which I already have it named background here. And I'm going to fill this with transparency and this is going to be the main background of our YouTube channel art. So I'll click OK. And by the way, you guys should have the guides on here. If not, you can click and drag guides from the top and just set them to each point here. So I've got my background layer and I'm going to grab my bucket fill tool and my first color is going to be this sort of uh, off-white color. And you can copy the HTML notation here and I'll click OK. And I'll just click anywhere on the layer here and that'll fill this in with the background color. Once I've done that, I can bring in my image so I can go to File, Open as Layers to open the image as a layer, or I can just come over here after I've opened it into GIMP, and I just did that by going to File, Open, and I can click and drag the tab here and move it over, and then just drop the image on my composition. And so now we have our main image on here, and I'm going to change the name of this from Dropped Buffer to Main Image. And the name of this image may be different depending on how you bring in the photo, which method you use, but in this case, uh, it was dropped buffer because I just dragged and dropped it from another composition. So I'll just name that main image. And now what I want to do is use my move tool and I want to get the girl over here to the right inside of our safe area. So I'm just going to click and drag this over a little bit. And actually let me hold control and use my mouse wheel to zoom out a bit. And you can see this dotted line here marks the right side of our layer. So that's basically how much room I have to work with. And I'm just gonna move this in a little bit. I'm actually gonna move it all the way to the left and just down a little bit. And I can move it up a little bit cause I can have a little bit of her head cut off there. That's all right, so I'll go with that right there. I do wanna shrink this down a little bit. I wanna scale it down. So I'll grab my scale tool, make sure I'm on my main image layer and I'm just going to click and drag this and I'm making sure that my chain link icon is linked up here. That's gonna keep this at the same aspect ratio as the original. And I also have my image opacity for the preview down a little bit. That allows me to see through the image as I'm scaling it. And I'm just gonna scale it down a little bit and then I can use these squares here in the middle to move this around a bit until I basically get this to the size I want and the position I want it in. All right, so once I'm ready, I'll hit scale and that'll scale my image down. So there we go. And I'm just gonna grab my move tool. I do wanna move this down a little bit because I want some of this dark area to be a little bit more up top there. 
by the dark area, I just mean like the trees and everything. All right, so once we've done that, I'm going to bring in my logo and I designed a logo beforehand here. And here is my logo and I'll also include this as a file that you can download if you wanna follow along. I'm gonna hit Control Shift C. That basically is going to copy visible. Uh, because this is an XCF file, there's a lot of layers and uh, I hid the background here. So if I just copy visible, it's only going to copy what you see here. I'll probably post this as a PNG file so you guys can just go to edit copy if you want. Here's copy visible below that so you can see Shift Control C. And I'm gonna come back over here to our original composition and hit Control V to paste that. And that will paste this as a floating selection layer. I'll click on that and just click here to put that on a new layer. And then we can rename this logo and I'll hit enter. So now we have our logo on its own layer here. I'm gonna crop the size of this layer so we know it's the exact size of our logo that we're using here. So I'll go to layer, crop to content, and that'll crop the layer down. It'll take out all the transparency that's in there. And then I'm just gonna grab my alignment tool and I'm gonna set this relative to image and I'll click on this layer here and you'll see that it's been selected because it's got these boxes in the corner. And then I'll just click to align this to the center of target and then the middle of target. And that'll make sure that our logo is in the dead center of our YouTube channel art. All right, so next I wanna add my tagline text here. So I'm gonna grab my text tool and I'm just going to click underneath our main text there. And I have the font set to Henrik or Enric, not sure how to pronounce that, but I'll just type travel show for millennials. And if your font isn't set to this, you can just come over here and click on the font and just cycle through the fonts or click this button here, that'll open the fonts up over here into its own dialog box, and then you can find the font right there. So once I have my text typed out, I'm gonna grab my move tool, and I'm just gonna move this font up a bit, and I'm actually going to hold control and zoom in a little bit so I can see this a bit better. So I zoomed in using my mouse wheel again. So I'll move this up a little bit more. I'm gonna grab my alignment tool again, click on this text, and then just click to align this to the center of target. So that'll center this up on our image. Now what I'm gonna do is come back over here to our layers panel, and I'm gonna create a new layer. And I'm just gonna name this rectangle. Make sure my caps lock is off. Fill it with transparency and click okay. And now what I wanna do is add a rectangle behind my text. So I'll grab the rectangle select tool, and I'm just gonna draw a rectangle. I just pretty much eyeballed this. You can make it a little bit wider than the text. And if you want, you can go to Image, Guides, New Guide by Percent, and I'm gonna change this to Vertical and set this to 50, and click OK, and that's going to give us a guide in the middle of our composition. And now I can click within our rectangle and just drag this so that it lines up to the middle there, and that way we know this is aligned to the center of our image. And I'm gonna click and drag this rectangle layer below our text layer, since we don't want the rectangle we're gonna to draw to overshadow our text. And next I'm going to grab our gradient tool here and I'm gonna to check to make sure that this is set to foreground and transparent. And what I'm doing basically is I'm drawing a gradient going from the left side here since this side is a little bit lighter and to the right side I'm gonna have it basically fade into this darker color here. Cause as you could tell the text, the white text is easier to see on the darker colors here. So now I'm just gonna grab our foreground color, grab the eyedropper tool and select this dark color and click OK. I'll change the shape here to linear, and then I'm just going to click and drag my gradient, and I'll hold control while I do that to keep this in straight line mode. And make sure you're on your rectangle layer when you're drawing this gradient, by the way. And then I'll hit Enter. And now we have this cool gradient. I'll hit Control shift a to select None. So we have this cool gradient behind our tagline text there, and it makes it easier to read our tagline text. Next, I'm gonna add the text for the new episodes. So I'll grab my text tool again, and I'm just gonna change this color to white again and click OK. And when I click on here, I'm just going to type, and with my caps lock key on, new episodes. And this time I wanna change the font style, so I'm gonna select all my text, click on here. We can click this button again to open up our fonts over here. And I'm just gonna come up a couple fonts to the Hand C font. This will be another free font that I'm going to include a download link to in the description. And this font actually has a cool feature with the lowercase o, so I'm gonna highlight the o, turn my caps lock key off, and just type a lowercase o there. And you'll see that has an underline under the o now, I just think that looks kinda cool. 
And I'm also going to decrease the font size of this, so I'll click on all of it, and I'll change the size to 35 and hit enter. And then I'll grab my move tool and just sort of move this into place. And I'm just estimating right now, so I'll put it about right there. And then I'm gonna grab my text tool again with the caps lock key on, and I'm just gonna type Wednesday, Wednesdays, plural. And I'm gonna change the font size to 50 just to make it a little bit larger than that other font we used. And then I'm just gonna grab the move tool and move this into place. All right, once we've done that, I'm going to add a shape behind that. So I'm gonna come back here to the layers panel and create a new layer. And I'll just name this rectangle two, just so we don't confuse it with the other one. And I'll click okay. And I'm just gonna make sure this is below both of those text layers we just created by clicking and dragging it. And now I'm going to grab my rectangle select tool and just draw a rectangle. And it's okay if it goes a little bit above this guide here. And I'm just gonna move it, I'm gonna eyeball it, make sure it's centered with this text. And then I'm gonna change the color here. I'm gonna use my eyedropper tool and just grab one of these dark colors and click okay. And then we're gonna grab the gradient tool again and keeping it set to foreground and transparent, I'm just going to click and hold control and drag this up. And you can sort of adjust how this fades by adjusting this midpoint right here. So that adjusts uh, how fast it's going to fade from that darker color to a transparency. And of course, we can always move uh, this starting endpoint here. And then I'll hit enter to apply that gradient. And then I'll hit control shift A to deselect it. Now the issue here, of course, is that this rectangle goes a little bit above the guide, but I can easily fix that by alt clicking on the desktop max layer. So that's going to create a selection area around the desktop max layer there. And making sure I'm on my rectangle two layer, I'll hit control I, that'll invert the selection area. And then I'll hit the delete key. And now you'll see that our rectangle that we drew on our rectangle two layer is outside of the desktop max layer. And I'm actually gonna keep this selection area selected here on purpose. So hold control and zoom out a bit. What I can do now is come over to my main image layer, hit control X and that'll cut everything out. And you can either leave your YouTube channel art design like this, or you can hit control V to paste this on its own new floating selection layer. And then I'll click here to put that on a new layer. So here we have the main image cutout part here. So I'm just gonna name this main image two. And now what we can do with this is we can kind of play around with it so I can decrease the opacity of it like that. And that just kind of creates a cool effect. And this is something that your subscribers are only gonna see on a TV anyway, but just kind of creates a little bit more of a dynamic design here. And I think this looks pretty cool. So there's one last thing to do here and I'm gonna hold control and zoom in. I'm gonna add a little YouTube logo here. So I'm gonna open up the location where I have this YouTube logo on my computer. And you can get a logo like this on Icon Finder for free. I'm gonna click and drag this into our composition and just drop it directly into GIMP. And then I'll grab my move tool and you'll see this is now on its own new layer. And I'm just going to click and drag this into place like this. And we'll drop it right there and I'll hold control and zoom out a little bit. And now we've got our YouTube logo right here. And actually, let me just move this up a bit. So I can zoom all the way out and hit control shift T and that'll hide all my guides. And now what I need to do is save this. So I'm gonna to go to file, export as and you can name your composition here, and then come down here to select file type by extension, and I just went with JPEG for this. You do need to make sure that it is under six megabytes, that is the max file size that YouTube will allow. But I'm gonna hit export, and I'll just hit replace because I did save this before. I've got the quality all the way up to 100. If you need to save space, you could turn this down to something like 60, and then I'll just hit export. And now I'll come over to my YouTube channel, and I'll just click on this icon here, and that will allow me to upload my YouTube channel art. And I'll search for this on my computer, so here it is. And I'll just double click on that, and that'll upload it. And now you'll see that we get a preview of our YouTube channel art design on all of our different devices here. And you shouldn't need to adjust the crop or anything, it should just fit if you stuck to the dimensions in the template. And then I'll just click select here, and you'll see now we have our YouTube channel art design uploaded to our YouTube channel. All right, so that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you guys liked it. If you did, you could subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash daviesmediadesign. You can visit our website at daviesmediadesign.com. You can enroll in our GIMP photo editing course from beginner to pro photo retoucher on Udemy. And you could support our channel and help us grow by becoming a patron on Patreon. And I'll include a link to that as well as all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description of the video. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.